Hello everyone, this is Reverend DeAndra Averhart and this course is entitled Rags to Riches and it is brought to you by the Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies and Educational Component of Tia Deshay LLC. I'm offering this class as an offering. I'm tithing my gift. This class is offered or will be offered on my YouTube channel on the social media platform YouTube. Typically, there is a cost associated with my classes, my courses, a monetary cost. I usually teach my classes either in person or I teach them through Udemy. U as in unicorn, D as in dog, E as in Edward, M as in Mary, Y as in yo-yo. I usually teach my courses through Udemy and the lowest course or the lowest price for my courses on Udemy is $19.99 and the highest uh, is $24.99. But I am giving this particular course through YouTube, through the social media platform YouTube, I'm offering this I'm providing this as an offering. I am tithing my gift because I was led to do it, first of all, through spirit. And it's important. It is important, especially for black people, um, to really, really, really for us to really examine and analyze, dissect our relationship with poverty. So it is my intention with, with this course is that if it just reaches one person or when it reaches that one person, that one person is connected to generations and that one person will have dismantled po poverty, the spirit, the energetic tie and core to poverty in their life and in the generations that are coming after them and that in the generations that came before them when it reaches that one person that at least a generation has been healed of poverty and i'm particularly focused on african-americans because one i'm african-american and two we have the most challenging time with dismantling our poverty mindset and cutting the cords of the poverty of spirit in our lives or the poverty spirit in our lives and in our families' uh, lives. So that's what this is all about. This is the first lecture for this particular course, Rags to Riches. Once again, I am Reverend Deandra Everhart. And this is brought to you by the Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies, an educational component of Tia Deshay LLC. And I would like to say that although this course does not come with a monetary attachment, you are still paying for this course. You're paying for this course with your time and with your attention. Therefore, I suggest you take it serious as if you are actually in the classroom to cut off your phone, um, get in a place where you're free of distractions, it's quiet, you can concentrate however you choose to take notes. I suggest you get a note taking device and take notes because this is a class. This is a class. My gift is teaching. I actually went to school and received three degrees um, in education. So, and I taught for at least 15 years in the public educational sector uh, in Detroit. So, I am a teacher. That is what I do. That is one of my roles. So I suggest you take it seriously, seriously, even if you didn't pay for it with currency, with money, with whatever your currency is, 
in the country in which you live in, but you're paying for it with your time and your time should be just as valuable as your money. Okay, so take this seriously because I take it seriously. All right, legal, legal disclaimer. Now, if you decide to take a course with me on Udemy, you will notice that the courses on Udemy and this course are set up the exact same way. So just because I'm not attaching a monetary value to this, I am still giving you the same rigor I'm still giving you the same content. I'm still giving you the same value as if you pay uh, for this with currency, whatever your currency is in the, in the country in which you live, okay? So if you take a course with me on Udemy, you'll see that the course is on Udemy and this course is the exact same setup. So legal disclaimer, this entire PowerPoint course of the Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies is copyrighted 2015 through 2022 by the Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies, LLC, and Tia Deshay, LLC, all rights reserved. This PowerPoint course may not be copied or duplicated in whole or part by any means without express prior agreement in writing with the owner and creator or unless specifically noted on this presentation. Some photographs or documents contained in this PowerPoint presentation course may be the copyrighted property of others. Acknowledgement of those copyrights is hereby given. Here is the agenda for today's lecture. I'm going to go over the vision, mission, rationale, and model for Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies. I'm going to um, incorporate the scripture give you a cultural trailblazer, the intentions for this course. We're going to go into the lecture. Um, I'm going to give you the references, the materials that I used to uh, create this lecture, and then the completion. Vision, mission, rationale, and model for Selah Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies. Our vision statement is to change, challenge, and heal generations. Our mission statement is to create a learning space where people know, recognize, and understand that the tools and resources needed to change, challenge, and heal themselves already exist within. Rationale is that people, specifically melanated people of the African diaspora, want to be given the permission to exercise the right to change themselves. And because they want to be given that permission, through my courses, through my curriculum, I am hereby giving them the permission to change themselves. And the motto here is that learning starts within. Everything starts within, even learning. Even learning. To sit down and take this course, to take any course, you know, whether it's on a collegiate level, whether you're going to a trade school, whether you're specializing in a certain, uh, training or curriculum or skill or talent it all started within you you received an idea you had a knowing you had an urging and you acted on it so that's what that's where or that's the premise for our motto here at Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies is that learning starts within Okay, our scripture in affirmation. Our scripture is taken from 1 Samuel, the second chapter and the eighth verse. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the worlds upon them. If you look at that scripture, you can see dust and dung heal. Dust is dirty. Dust can cause you to cough. Dust um, dirties your skin, your clothes. You can, uh, bacteria can breed in dust. 
dust is not a good thing good thing dust symbolically in the bible means a very low station you're at you're like the lowest of the low you're at the bottom of the totem pole a dung hill is feces waste uh bowel movements the the ex, um when your body excretes bile and then it's placed on on top of a hill imagine just all of your bile movements being placed on top of a hill that's what a dung hill is <laughs> so here you are being raised up being elevated from those positions that is the imagery that the scripture is giving a poverty let that sink in that is the image that the scripture is giving a poverty of a beggar being lifted up from a hill made of human feces human bile or it could even be animal feces. The fact of the matter is, it's feces. You being lifted up from the dust, the dirt. That is the imagery presented in the scripture of poverty. And that you're being raised up and being set among to sit among to associate with to live with to be in community with princes people of high stature this is your rightful position people not to waddle around in dirt not to live in a dung hill because poverty has an odor poverty has a look poverty has a stench poverty has a a, a feeling an uneasy feeling a feeling of anxiety a feeling of clutching your pearls clutching your purse a feeling of someone's going to steal from you a feeling of distrust and you're being raised up from that from that consciousness that consciousness that dung heel consciousness poverty is a consciousness of human waste to think poor to act poor to behave poor is to live imagine just living in human waste or 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 just waste in general the waste of animals the waste of humans that is what a poverty consciousness mindset is and through this lecture through this course it is my intention to raise you up out of that consciousness that dung heel dust consciousness and to sit among the princes to sit among wealth to sit among abundance to sit among prosperity and to rule to govern to have authority from that place and do it with confidence The affirmation for today is from Dr. Paul Leon Masters and his book, Spiritual Mind Power Affirmations, Practical, Mystical, and Spiritual Inspiration Applied to Your Life. That's where this particular affirmation came from, from the book, Spiritual Mind Power Affirmations, Practical, Mystical, and Spiritual Inspiration Applied to Your Life by Dr. Paul Leon Masters. You can find this book on Amazon. 
the affirmation is as follows. I recognize hard times as an atmosphere that simulates new opportunities through which I may prosper. Once again, I recognize hard times as an atmosphere that simulates new opportunities through which I may prosper. Today is Monday, August 15th, 2022. It is, a, it is currently 4.14 p.m. And supposedly, let, let the uh, economic analysts tell us, the financial analysts tell us, the economists tell us, let the news tell us we are in, in a recession if you live here in America. America is undergoing a recession. Well, well, according to this affirmation that this, we need to be recognizing this time as an environment in which there are new opportunities all around us. If you study history, you will know that during the Great Depression, it produced some of the world's most famous millionaires and billionaires during the Great Depression. This is a time of opportunity. You need to just have the consciousness, the awareness to recognize the opportunities and not fall victim to, not fall prey to, oh, everything is going up, everything is going up, gas is going up, food is going up, the cost of living is going up, prices are going up. Well, if those things are going up, then your creativity is going up. Your prosperity is going up. Your wealth is going up. Ideas to make money are going up. There, It just can't be one thing going up and not the other. If gas is going up, so is your idea to make money going up. Don't pigeonhole yourself. Don't limit yourself. Be careful, be mindful of who you're getting your information from and what you choose to believe. The scripture for today was taken from the King James Version of the Bible. Our cultural trailblazer is Henry Boyd. Henry Boyd was a former slave born in Kentucky. He was also a skillful, skillful cabinet, cabinet maker. After selling several pieces of furniture, Henry made enough money to purchase his freedom. In 1859, Henry Boyd was valued at $40,000, which converts into $1.2 million today. Now, I put in parenthesis 2020 because the book in which I got this information from was published in 2020. It was copyrighted in 2020. So at the time, $40,000 was worth $1.2 million, $1.2 million in 2020's uh, economy. The reason why I chose this cultural trailblazer is because, especially if you're a black person taking this course, this was before the Emancipation Proclamation. So don't let history tell you that every black person was a slave in America. And they were poor and destitute and oppressed and down and out. Because I've just given you proof, historical proof, that this was not the case for every black person in America. As you can see, he made enough money to purchase his freedom. And he did not die enslaved. He did not die broke and disgusted. He did not die in poverty. He died, according to 2020 stand standards, a millionaire. Be mindful of who's telling you your history. Be mindful of the root of your poverty consciousness.
The course intentions. The intent for this course is to examine poverty physically and metaphysically. To look at poverty for just what it is. And to look at it beyond the physical aspects of poverty. See, like when we think of poverty, we think of dilapidated housing. We think of um, social services such as welfare, food stamps, um, Section 8 housing, affordable housing. We look at um, vouchers, um, government assisted programs or government funded uh, um, government funded programs to help poor and elderly people. We think of terms like um, low income, at risk, um, food deserts. That's the physical components of poverty but metaphysically we need to look at beyond the physical the spiritual aspects the spiritual connotations and denotations of poverty because you need to look at both if you want to dismantle your poverty consciousness you have to look at both one is not um i won't say that you have to you have to look at both. You don't um, disregard one for the other. What I was going to say is one does not have more value than the other, but it does. Anything metaphysical, anything beyond the physical is more valuable than the physical. Because when you start looking at things from a metaphysical point of view, you can get to the root of what is causing the issue, and then you can start dismantling that that root uprooting that root and transmuting that energy so that it doesn't affect you again so metaphysical holds more weight and more value than the physical and the issue is is that those who have adopted and accepted a poverty consciousness notice notice i use the word adopted adopted means that it, it doesn't it didn't originally belong to you it wasn't originally part of your dna and bloodline that you constantly consciously chose to accept something in your life that wasn't originally a part of your dna i'm adopted so i i know about adoption i wasn't originally a part of the dna of my adoptive family but they consciously chose me to be part of their family so this poverty consciousness is adopted. You've adopted this. This wasn't originally part of your DNA. You adopted this consciousness. And to look at it from a metaphysical point of view holds way more value than the physical. Because the metaphysical will help us to get to the root of where this came from. Why did you choose to bring this into your life, into your existence when it when it wasn't when it never was when it was never part of your existence why did you consciously choose to bring it into your existence and once we get to get to the root of it and get the answer to that question then you can dismantle it and transmute it and it will never affect you or your bloodline again this is some good stuff i mean we're 23 minutes into this class and i've already dropped a lot of a lot of nuggets here i hope you're taking some really good notes people all right, the intent for this course is to dismantle the energy of poverty on an individual scale. Because once we do it on an individual scale, then you can you can do it on a collective scale. You can now start affecting the community in which you're assigned to. You can now start affecting change in your in your bloodline. So that the these are the course these are two items or these two intents or two intentions are the intentions or the purpose behind this particular lecture and course all right here's our lecture now if you see quotations at the end of this lecture i'm going to show you where i um got the information for for this lecture in order to deliver it to you and to teach it to you so the quotation marks mean that i quoted directly from this source 
So a lot of people are not supposed to be poor. They are created to have abundant wealth, success, breakthrough, but they still find themselves in the camp of poverty and lack. Notice it did not say all people. It said a lot of. This is where the metaphysics comes in. We choose what type of experience we want to have on this earth plane before we get here. And many times it's contingent upon past life experiences and what we learned in our past lives, what we didn't learn, what we need to learn. All of that plays a role into what we are going to accept or do while we're on this planet. If you are a Christian listening to this, and if you're having a challenging time with what I just said, your own Bible proves that. Because your own Bible, the your own Bible says that Jesus was seated at the right hand of God before he came down here to complete his earthly assignment. He was sitting, ruling and reigning with God. And yet he chose to come down here and have this experience. So if you're having a difficult time as a Christian listening to this, when I just said that we choose before we come down here what kind of experience we want to have your own bible supports that through the cornerstone of your religion jesus christ through his life in the bible it supports it that he chose to have this experience before he came down here okay and I should, I should have done a disclaimer or maybe, I don't even want to say, well, you, if we want a, a disclaimer, I'm not going to use the word I was going to, or the phrase I was going to use, um, that I'm going to say things. Because remember the intention, I said metaphysical. I'm going to say things that if you're not familiar with metaphysical concepts and you adhere to the Christian faith, or Islamic faith, or any type of organized religion or orthodox religion, it may not sit well with you in your in your doctrine and your dogma. However, I do believe that you didn't click on this class, this lecture for nothing, or by accident, or by coincidence. Remember, learning starts within. So it's something in you that kind of already knew what I'm saying. You've been thinking about it. It's been popping up in your head. And you, in a way, been following the crumbs, the breadcrumbs. Because learning starts within. So just to let you know, that's a disclaimer. <laughs> if you are a, a follower of Orthodox religion, you know, some of the things, it may make you uneasy because I know I used to be a follower of Orthodox organized religion. And, um, you know, it, it, made, it made me uneasy at first because I was used to operating in this box of organized religion. Okay, just to let you know. All right. So notice that this quote does not say all people are not supposed to be poor. Before we came to this planet, we, we chose certain things to happen. We chose to be in a certain economic status. Because we knew being in that economic status would teach us lessons that we needed to learn, to help absolve some karma, 
Um, and to help us see things in a different light. So you might be saying, well, dang, you know, well, the rich person chose to be rich and that isn't fair. And we'll get into that. Um, I'll get into that. But and why would somebody choose to be poor? Well, you have to know the metaphysics behind it. Because maybe in their past life, they were wealthy. And they looked down on poor people. And so they came into this experience as a poor person to know what it feels like to be in poverty. But here's the caveat. Doesn't mean that just because you chose the experience, that that's how you chose the ending of your story. It doesn't mean that you are meant to stay in poverty. Just because you chose to begin your story in poverty, it doesn't mean that your story is going to end in poverty. That is why the quote is here. A lot of people are not supposed to be poor. Because you chose that just for a temporary, you only chose that for a temporary experience. You did not choose that for a lifelong experience. If you even want to go deeper with it, they're not supposed to be poor. Because in the ideal world, man should not have succumbed to his ego and greed and, and hatred to enslave an entire group of people. Come on, people. <laughs> Come on. Case in point, you just not a lot of people are not supposed to be poor. They've accepted that as a reality. Some of them like the drama that's associated with being poor. It fulfills them. And they cannot imagine their life without the drama associated with poverty, as weird as that may sound. Some of them are not supposed to be poor, but will remain in poverty because they don't talk so much smack, so much stuff about rich people that for them to become rich, then they will be a hypocrite. And people will call them out, call them on the carpet about it. So it's like they have the potential to be rich or to be wealthy, but because they don't talk so much junk about wealthy people, it's like they stay in poverty because they will be deemed a hypocrite. People. Notice that this quote says, you were created to have abundant wealth. That even though you may have chose to have the experience of poverty, you were created to have abundant wealth, meaning the way you were created supersedes your decision to have temporary poverty in your life. Do you see how powerful you are? Oh my God, man, this class is awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. 
Do you get what I'm saying? That even you though you chose to have the experience of poverty temporarily, you were created to have abundance. So that trumps the decision that you made. So you may have decided to begin in poverty, but you better not end in it. If you are a Christian listening to this, your very own prophet, your very own Messiah, that you that is the cornerstone of your religion, Christianity, he chose to come down here and have this earthly experience and be this man of quote unquote, as Christians like to say, of lowly status, but he didn't end it. He made sure he didn't end it like that. He ended it like, I'm running this. <laughs> Call me Messiah. What's up, nah? I came up out the grave in three days. What's up? <laughs> What's up, nah? How about that? Because he knew how he was created trumped what he chose. Come on, people. Go preach it. Go preach it. Go preach it. Okay, let me let me keep going because I'm just telling you that right there can be enough class dismissed. See you next week. So you are meant to discover your God-given prosperity, success, blessings, breakthrough, wealth, and miracles. That goes back to what I just said. You may have decided that you are going to come down and begin your journey here in poverty, but you did that so that you can discover that you have the ability to get wealth. That's what you were created to do. So you chose to be poor, to tap into that ability. That it's not about your job making you wealthy. It's not about your education making you wealthy. It's about what's inside you. The ability that's inside you is what makes you wealthy. That is the lesson you are meant to learn while you're here on this earth plane. And that's why you decided temporarily to have a poverty experience. Come on, people. So by the time you leave this earth, you should no longer be poor. Because you would have come to the realization, the awareness that I was created to have abundance. And I was created to recognize that I already have it. It's already within me. I just need to figure out how to bring it into this third dimension. Because you didn't leave the upper dimension and come down here without that knowledge. It's just about you remembering how to access it. Come on, people. Come on, people. Come on, come on, come on. Because we, we, we destroying some poverty consciousness today. That's what we doing today, people. That's what we doing today. How about that? Causes of poverty. Poor education, natural disaster, embezzlement of government funds by officials, poor political governance, low skills. I want you to look at the government part. Simply, if we had government, if there was government in place that was of integrity, and of, of integrity, we're going to use that word, of integrity, technically, by default, nobody would be in poverty. 
because the government would be one of integrity and would ensure that no that everybody has more than enough because there is more than enough don't ever 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 think that there is lack that is a fault that is a lie from the pit of hell <laughs> as they would say in a church that is a lie there is more than enough to go around to go around 50 million times if there was not more than enough you wouldn't be here listening to this and i wouldn't be here recording this the world would have ended proof proof that we have been on this planet humans have been on this planet for i for i don't even know how many years is proof that there is more than enough dr paul leon masters he is the founder of the international um metaphysical ministry the university of metaphysics uh in sedona his school his institute is the reason why i'm an ordained minister of metaphysics why i am a metaphysician why i have my bachelor's in metaphysics soon to have my master's in metaphysics i'm just waiting for my thesis and my exam to be graded and, and soon to have my PhD in metaphysics and metaphysical science. He said in one of the modules that I took when I was getting my bachelor's, he said that you're going to know the mindset of, the, of, a, of a group of people based on who they put in leadership. So if a group of people are uh, if a group of people are living in poverty it is because they put they put in office people who have poverty mindsets or people who are intent on keeping you enslaved economically keeping you in poverty keeping you impoverished and think about it think about the current climate of today's political arena sector environment however you want to call it certain political groups parties just dog rich people but yet they're in power and they were placed in power through through people's votes so they have a poverty consciousness that means the people that you are are serving or you are or who you are elected to serve have poverty consciousness because as you'll see i think in the next slide that one reason why people are poor is because they talk so negatively about rich people so regardless if this person is a politician and went to school and all of that they still have a poverty consciousness but that reflects the the people in which they are elected to serve look at the look at the leaders look at the government and that will tell you a lot about the mindset of the people who elected them so even though you know my intention i'm really targeted toward black people the world we're talking about in general we're looking at just the united states the country in which i live in the united states has a poverty consciousness because currently if we are under well we are it's not even if we are under a democratic led system the democratic party is in control right now 
And a lot of them talk negatively about wealthy people in order to secure the votes of, pov of people that are in poverty. So they have a poverty consciousness. Imagine if the government alone would revamp their consciousness when it comes to wealth and money. Like I said, by default, people wouldn't even be poor. People wouldn't be poor. If, if the government alone developed a poverty consciousness, I mean, excuse me, if the government alone adopted a wealth consciousness, Be mindful of who you putting in office. So in order to get your vote, I have to dog out rich people. But the very politician who's asking for your vote, dogging out rich people, make more money than you. Live a better quality of life than you do. They're not living in poverty. Make that make sense, people. They're dogging out the rich, saying they're going to tax the rich. Um, just really just going off on the rich in whatever style or fashion in which they do it in order to get your vote. But yet, they're in the same tax bracket as the rich. Make it make sense, people. Yet, you will, based on your current economic situation, it's, very, it's highly unlikely you would ever rub elbows with this very same politician who is dogging the rich to get your vote. But based on your present economic status, you wouldn't even be in the same rooms as, as these people. How are they dogging people that they are a part of? You really think these senators, the president, vice president, everybody that's working in government, you really do think that they're living hand to mouth. But yet they're telling you to think negatively about wealthy people, rich people. Think about it, people. Think. It's time to start thinking critically. So if the government alone operated in fiscal integrity, in moral aptitude, we wouldn't even have poverty, just by default. Other, as you can see, other causes of poverty is poor education, and I just covered that. Lacking the critical thinking skills. That's under poor education. Doesn't matter. It's, it's, more, it's beyond going to school in a dilapidated building. It's lacking critical thinking skills and just taking and just repeating whatever it is the media tells you. When you say, yeah, those, those rich Republicans and, you know, you're just repeating what you heard. That's poor education when you don't think critically for yourself. You don't go and do the research for yourself. Remember, poor education is more than just not having the textbooks, not having the resources. Like I said, going, um, not having the, the financial resources to have the, the tangible physical resources to get a quality education going to school in a dilapidated building, it's beyond that. When you are not, when you aren't even taught to think critically, when all you do is just regurgitate what your mama said and what grandma said and what granddaddy said and what people in your community are saying and you're not thinking for yourself. That's poor education. Amongst other things. But remember, we got to look at the metaphysical here. Natural disaster, um, obviously a person um, 
can have a, a experience, a temporary experience of poverty if they lose everything. But remember, you could lose everything and a month later be wealthy because it's remembering how you were created. Regardless if a tornado hits, a hurricane hits, a flood hits, it, it, it doesn't matter. And then low skills. Um, low skills just simply mean it, that you don't develop skills and skill sets uh, with the changing times. That can keep you in poverty. For instance, one reason why, and it's so simple, you don't even think about it until you it's brought to your attention. One of the reasons why a lot of our seniors, a lot of our elders um, are in poverty is because they don't know how to use technology. That's what low skills pertain to. By using a flip phone, not using um, a touchscreen phone, a smartphone, something that simple keeps our elders in poverty. If you look at an elder who has a flip phone versus an elder who knows how to navigate and use a smartphone, there is a difference in their finances. I'm not saying that's the end all be all, but that plays a role. Not only being uh, open to the new technology, but learning how to use it for your advantage. Like you can have an elder who has, you know, a, a touch screen, a smartphone, you know, all of that, but if they don't know how to navigate it and use it, to their advantage and leverage it, then they're in the same poverty consciousness as the elder who has the flip phone. But we don't, we don't make the connection. Those small things, the small things is what, get, is what gets us tripped up and it leads to the bigger things. That one small thing of teaching our elders how to navigate with the new technology and, and teach them how to leverage it could could can mean wealth and po can mean either wealth or poverty, but we don't think that way. But this class, this course, this lecture is to get you to start thinking that way. Poverty and excuses. There is no excuse for anyone to be poor. There's not. Even if we chose that experience before we came to this earthly plane, by the time we got here, like I said, previous slide, if the government, if the people who were electing the officials became critical thinkers and really start examining and dissecting and analyzing government, that alone could could dissolve poverty. Uh, and I know I'm oversimplifying it, but just for the sake of um, the context of this lecture and this course, I mean, we could have all kind of conversations, you know, with people who study economics and they could give all kind of reasons probably to debunk what I just said, but a lot of times people debunk simplicity because all of the data and the degrees and the intelligence and the academia blocks us from realizing that the solution to a lot of our problems are very simple. Very simple. If people would just have integrity, fiscal, integri inte fiscal integrity, if governments would just have fiscal integrity, if governments would stop being hypocritical and dogging or just being hypocritical and just lacking um, morals. How can, 
how can you dog a group of people that you're part of, but you're doing it to get votes? What does that say about you and your character? All of that, like, it's, it's simple. It's, it's very simple why poverty exists on a government level. Um, there is no excuse for anyone to be poor, based on what I just said. Um, God provided us with everything needed to be successful. We are all tapped in. There is one infinite mind. And we are all individualized thoughts of that one infinite mind. And we are the thoughts of that infinite mind of how that infinite mind wants to express itself on this earth plane. All of us are tapped into that same source, that one source, infinite mind, you can call it God, you could call it um, um, higher self. Uh, you could call it call it God consciousness. You can call it the Most High. You can call it Jehovah. You can call it Allah. Whatever you want to call it, whatever name you want to associate with it, we are all connected to that source. Case in point: Do you think the religions here? that exist are by, are by accident? No, religions are an individualized thought of God, how God wanted to express him or herself in this earth realm through religion. Now it got perverted, we won't get into all of that. It got perverted because man and their ego, get it all in their ego, you know, and it, get, it got perverted along the way. But each of the religions serve a purpose. It's how God chose to express him or herself in this earth plane through that particular religion. But it was not meant to be an end-all, be-all. Religion, the Bible, are not eternal. They are just simply guideposts. They are just simply uh, resources on our path to eventually get us to connect to God, to higher source. We are not meant to depend on those things forever. Eventually, we are supposed to be able to get everything directly from the source. Now, these uh, the Bible and religion can serve as tools, can serve as mediums, but they are not to be a crutch and they are not to be forever. I believe that eventually a new Bible, that in God's mind, a new Bible, quote unquote, should be written. I do not believe that the Bible that we have today or any other religious book, but because my background is Christianity, I use the Bible as an example. I do not believe that the Bible that we have today is meant to be the only Bible. I believe a new Bible should be written. It's supposed to be written. Because that's how infinite the mind of God is. And that one Bible can't be the only Bible that God wants on this. Oh, that only The only Bible, the only holy book that God wants on this planet. I believe that God wants many holy books on this planet. Will we see it in my generation or your generation? Well, probably not. Maybe not. But I don't think the Bible that we know of today will be the only holy book. As long as planet Earth remains. I don't believe the Quran, uh, other holy books, the Kabbalah will be the only one. The only version or the only one that there will be many 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 versions many 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 translations because we are constantly growing and evolving and we are constantly getting or becoming one with the creator like we were supposed to be like 
it was intended for us to be. So God provided us with everything need provided us with everything needed to be successful. Everything. 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 And when I talk about success and wealth, you have it's up to you to define what success success and wealth is to you. Once you come up with that definition and you meet that requirement, then you are successful and you are wealthy. We live in a society where wealth is determined by what we see, a dollar figure. And that's fine if that's what your level of wealth or success is or your definition of of success and wealth is, that's fine. But everybody needs to determine what their definition of success and wealth is. What your definition of poverty is. That's another reason why people stay in poverty. It's because they don't know. They don't know what poverty is. They haven't defined poverty. You may think you have defined poverty but re- in reality, it's it more than likely somebody else's definition. It's probably what a textbook told you, what a teacher told you, what school told you, what your pastor don't told you, what the government don't told you poverty is. What is your definition of poverty? Because for all I know, you may not consider yourself poor. So this ain't even for you. You might already consider yourself wealthy and successful and prosperous. So we need to define what poverty is, what wealth is, and what success is for you. Once you come up with those definitions, it's not going to matter what nobody say. It doesn't matter what I say. It It does not matter because you've already come up with your definitions. And your life is going to align with those definitions. And I am not here, let me make it unequivocally clear, that don't take nothing I say for law. You better tap in. You better get before whoever you call God and tap in. Do not put me on no pedestal. Do not take what I say is the end all be all. I am only here to deliver a message. I am not the Messiah in your life. I am not here to to create a doctrine or a dogma or a religion. But once you define what poverty is, once you define what success is, once you define what wealth is, then I guarantee you your life is going to align with that. Now, you can take this course, finish this course, listen to this lecture, take notes, and you can integrate it in your life however you see fit, however the Spirit tells you to do it, integrate however the Spirit tells you to integrate it into your life. But eventually, it all falls back on you. You are the Messiah of your life. You need to determine the definition of poverty in your life. You need to determine the definition of wealth in your life and you need to determine the definition of success in your life because you may not even see yourself as poor. And if you don't see yourself as poor and you don't see yourself as rich, then what are you? We could, we could, Possibly say, are you middle class? I don't know. That's up for for you to decide. But the goal and the intent of this course, of this lecture, is for you to identify if you consider yourself poor. You need to identify why you consider yourself poor. Where did this? Where did this come from? 
where did this definition come from and how you can change it. But I'm here to tell you, you have everything you need to be successful, everything. I, every single day of my life, I am reminded of that principle. Just when my mind, my ego will get me into thinking that I don't have it, I figure out that I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to tell you. Just when I think that, oh, I'm not going to make it, when the mind starts to wander and I have to bring it back in and I realize every day I've been given my daily bread. And what I thought I wanted, I got it, but I didn't need it for that moment. See, the stress and the anxiety comes from you want it because you think you need it for that moment. And you don't need it for that moment. You get it, but you don't need it for that moment. But you are stressed out thinking that you do. Why am I poor? One is you abandon the work of God. Now, when you, at the end of this lecture, I'm going to give you the uh, website in which I received or I gathered the information to, to um, create this lecture and to create this course in general. And you'll if you choose to go to the website you will see that it is christian based okay so i'm going to explain this from a metaphysical point of view and also from a christian base because that is um, my foundation how i grew up but i'm also going to approach it metaphysically abandon the work of god now literally if you if you're a christian in the church it means that you literally have you know you don't go to church um, you don't tithe, you don't give offerings, you don't put God first. You know, you go to church only when something happens, you know, you having problems, you all stressed out, you know, the world is just falling in on you, you know, but when everything is good, you have no time for God, you're not praying, you're not tithing, that, in that context, abandoning the work of God. In the metaphysical context, it means that you're not walking in your purpose. The work that God assigned you to do, that you agreed to do before you came to this earth plane, you're not doing it. You're not doing it because you thinking it's not going to pay the bills. What will my mama think? What will big mama think? What will daddy think? What will grandpa think? What will my cousin think? What will the neighbor think? You're so worried about what everybody else is thinking that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, what you agreed to do before you came to this earth plane. You just abandoned it. You've abandoned it for money. You've abandoned it for fame. You've abandoned it for people's opinions. You just abandoned it for greed, for selfishness, for fear. Whatever the reason is, you fill in the blank, but you've abandoned it. And that's why you're poor. That's why that's why you robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's why you can't keep a job. That's why they garnishing your wages. That's why you're behind in child support. We can blame all outside things if we want to. But the minute people get aligned with their purpose. And why they were sent to this earth plane, you'll be amazed how people get out of debt. You'll be amazed at how people who were 18 years behind in child support all of a sudden don't owe a dime. 
I'm telling you, you will be amazed when you align yourself with your purpose. When you surrender your will to God's will. You'll be amazed how all of those things just disappear. We can blame the court system and how it's unfair and unjust. And and in a lot of cases, you are absolutely right. But at the end of the day, what you going to do about it? You could talk about all day how it's unfair and unjust and it caters to the mother and it doesn't, you know, cater to the father um, when it comes to child support or just whatever or, you know, whatever other debt you may have. We can talk about student loan debt and all of that. But at the end of the day, if you are not in alignment with what you agreed to do before you came to this earth plane, you're going to be in poverty. You're going to be poor. And in upcoming classes or upcoming lectures, you're going to understand that there is more than just financial poverty. So please start expanding your mind as you're waiting for the upcoming classes or lectures to be uploaded on YouTube. Start expanding your mind and that's your homework. Think of other ways that you can be poor. Because oftentimes, we always associate poverty with just finances. But you can be wealthy and still be in poverty. Don't let the money fool you. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. Abandon community. Now, if you go to the, once I tell you where I received this information from, and you go back to that website, he uses the words abandon evangelism, meaning that you don't go out and you don't tell people about salvation and about the, the works of Jesus and the divinity of Jesus and what Jesus did for, for you to, to be saved. I look at it metaphysically as you have abandoned your community. Whoever that community is to you, if you have abandoned your children, if you have um, abandoned your parents, and I'm not saying like, you know, um, let people misuse you, you know, or you enable people. That's not what I'm saying. When I say that you abandon your community, like you're disrespectful to your parents. Your parent goes out of their way to the point that they put their life on hold to make sure you are okay and doing well and you do nothing, but you just pimp them and you just live off, you just live off them. You, you, thirty year, 25 and up and you living at home and you're not contributing to the household. Nothing wrong with living at home, but you're not contributing nothing to the household. The only income coming in is your parents' disability check or social security check or their, their, the check they get from their job. And you just living up in there, using all the utilities, eating up all the food, and then you got the nerve to bring in your kids. That's what I mean about abandoning your community. You're not there to be unified, to, to help out the community in which you're assigned to. Everybody is assigned to a community. Everybody, whether it is your immediate family, whether it's your neighborhood, whether it's your city, whether it's your state, whether it's, you know, your continent, your village, your country, everybody is assigned to a certain group of people. And when you decide, oh, I don't want to deal with those group of people. That's why you poor. 
Although my information is for anybody, no matter what your race is, no matter what what your religion is, no matter what your social economic status is, no matter what your, your uh, gender orientation, your sexual orientation, anybody can listen to these classes, take these classes, listen to these lectures, watch these videos and learn something from them. But I know what group of people I'm called to. I'm called to black people. And to abandon my community, I'm writing my check of poverty, pun intended. I'm asking for I'm asking for poverty in my life if I abandon my community that I'm assigned to. Not saying that I'm going to turn my nose and turn my back on other people because absolutely I'm not. But it would give me great joy, immense satisfaction when my people get this information and it changes their lives. Because I understand that's who I'm called to. That's my community. So when you abandon your community, you're asking for poverty. You ask for poverty on a silver platter. The irony of that. That's the oxymoron in and of itself. You've forgotten the source of wealth. On my YouTube channel, for 40 straight days, I didn't miss a day. I did the 40 day prosperity plan uh, with my YouTube audience, with my YouTube community. And one of the main concepts of the 40 day prosperity plan is to remember that God is your source. It's not your husband, it's not your boyfriend, it's not your baby daddy, it's, it's not your sugar daddy, it's, it's not your job, um, it's not your YouTube family. It's not your YouTube subscribers. It's not your Patreon. That is not your source of wealth. God is your source of wealth. And God will speak to people in order to keep that flow of wealth in your life. But those people are not your source. You have to remember who the source is. If you get disconnected from the source, all this other stuff won't even matter. It won't matter how many YouTube subscribers you have. It won't matter how many ideas to, to get wealth that you have, that you have implemented. Once you unplug from the source, it's a wrap. You're poor. You're in poverty. Remember who the source of your wealth is. It is not people. Case in point, if you don't believe me, for those of you who have experienced death in your family or friends, and let's say that that person was your source of income, or they provided a large, they contributed a lot to the income coming into your home, and they're no longer here, right? They, they died. They transitioned. Guess what? You're still here. That's case in point. That, that was not your source of wealth. They were being used for that particular moment in time to financially assist you, but that's not your source. Because if that was your source, you still wouldn't be here. Takers, you're poor because all you do is take, 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 and you beg, 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 beg. Always got your hand out. Always looking for. Always got your hand out. Always looking for uh, the government to assist you. Always looking for free programs. People help to help you pay for something. Always looking for freebies. Always got your hand out. That's why you poor and you and you don't even return it. There's no reciprocation. 
you're breaking, you're actually breaking a spiritual law, giving and receiving. You are to give and you are to receive. You are to give and you are to receive. If all you're doing is receiving, 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 and you're never giving, you're breaking a spiritual law and there's the consequences for breaking laws. Or there are consequences for breaking laws. Always looking for a handout. Always seeing if, if you can cause somebody to do it for the low. Never want to pay full price for anything. Seeing if you can get the hookup. And then you realize, yeah, you got the hookup all right. And you got hookup service. You received hookup service and you received the hookup product. That's falling apart. You just take, 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 take. Always got your hand out. Always looking for somebody to give you something for free. But you're not giving anything in return. That's what I that's what I mean when I said at the beginning of this lecture that people use poverty as a way to perpetuate drama. They like the drama associated with it. They like the victim mentality associated with it. They like the sob story associated with it. And, and then the interesting thing about it is they'll use the poverty sob story and then turn right around and brag. Like, yeah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't missing no meals. Me and mine ain't hurting for nothing. But they're not telling you that they had to play they had to play the role of the pauper to get it but they'll flaunt it as if as if um they got it like that but the reason that they got it was because they played up being poor and how they don't have it come on people make it make sense you can't and then you speak curses upon those who are rich and that's what I was talking about. You talk negatively about rich people. And rich people can be somebody who you perceive have more than you. Who you talk about, you know, you talk about people about, you know, they always going to get their hair and nails done. Okay, if they like to get their hair and nails done, let them go get their hair and nails done. But because you believe that they have more than you, you're looking down on them. You're speaking negatively about them. You get into conversations about the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poor. We can't afford that. Put that back. You act like money grow on trees. You must be rich. You think you all that. She thinks she all that. He think he all that. Get jealous because the neighbors get a new car. You can get a new car too. Ain't nobody stopping you. Always trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's a poverty mindset. Be poverty mindset really is just talking about people in general like being negative and 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 talking about people in a um disparaging way in general that's just that's just what people in poverty do if you ever are around people who are considered rich or wealthy the conversations are very rarely about other people they are literally having discussions about their goals, their aspirations, their next project, um, investments, where they're going to spend their money. Um, are they going to, you know, get where they're going to give their money? Um, I don't want to say spend because we're talking about eliminating the poverty mindset. 
So as Reverend Ike would say, circulate. Stop saying spend because at the end of the word, if you take the S and the P off of the word spend, you have end, which means that your money ends wherever you put it. And our money does not end, it circulates. It comes back to us. Um, so when you're around wealthy people, the conversations are different. They're very rarely talking about people. They rarely talk, very rarely talk about what, who, who dating who and what so-and-so got on and why she have her hair like that. Um, the mindset is different. Now, I'm not saying that there are not some messy, wealthy people. But overall, in general, the conversations are different. The conversations are more set on basically how, how am I going to maintain this wealth? How am I going to maintain this lifestyle? Especially if they have children. Especially if the wealthy have children, they are really not engaging in low vibrational conversations about who, who wearing what and who dating who and how much money such and such got. Like, they're really making deals and signing contracts to ensure that their children will be wealthy once they leave here. And they really don't have time to talk about poor people. Rich people don't talk about poor people. Rich people don't talk about poor people like poor people talk about rich people. Isn't that ironic? The only time poor people will come up in conversation is when it relates to money. And what they can do to either help poor people or how they can leverage their money in the guise of helping poor people to make more money. But if rich people are talking about poor people, it's in the context of how they can make money off of poor people. And isn't that ironic? We're talking about a poverty consciousness here, rags to riches, but rich people are talking about ways that they can make money off of poor people. So that should tell you, if you consider yourself poor, you're not poor. Because rich people are thinking or talking about ways that they can make money off of you. So you can't be poor. You understand what I'm saying? You can't be poor if rich people are talking about ways to make money off of you. It's just how, you're, it's how you are circulating your money. I always say, and I will continue to say it, black people are not poor. Black people have money. It's how they choose to circulate their money. It's how they choose to view their money. It's how they choose to view money in general. But black people are not poor. They have money. Well, I should say, they have money. Are they poor? Yes, because their consciousness, their consciousness, but they have money. It's how they choose to circulate it. And rich people are having conversations on how to make money off of poor people, quote unquote. So that should tell you that it's not about physical. We're not talking physically here. They're sitting around, rich people are sitting around talking about how to make money off of people who are poor in consciousness. As long as you stay poor in consciousness, then they're going to sit around and find out ways to get your money. Because you're not thinking of ways of how to use your money wisely. You're not thinking of ways of how to use your money wisely. So rich people are thinking for you. They're thinking how to use your money for them.
I would say that you need to cease and desist speaking curses upon those who are rich. And when I say curses, I use that word intentionally because you are speaking a curse on them. When you talk negatively about them. Now, whether that curse, uh, whether that curse will come in to fruition in their life, I doubt it. Because their mind, their mind is a fortress. Your curses can't penetrate their mind. They don't have a poverty consciousness. So your curses, all of the negative things that you say about the rich, it just bounces off of them and it comes right back to you. And it just gets you deeper and deeper into your poverty consciousness. You're just digging more and more trenches into your poverty consciousness. If people would learn to cease and desist and speaking negatively about rich people, a lot more people would be out of poverty. That is what's causing a lot of people to be impoverished. It's just their words and what they're saying about it is interesting you're speaking negatively about a group of people that you secretly want to be or that you i won't even say secretly that you're that you're trying to be or trying to become that doesn't even make sense and that's why you can't become it because you're sending mixed messages to your subconscious you are a house divided within itself on one hand, you're talking and dogging rich people, but then on the other hand, you're complaining about how you don't have their money. And if you had their money, what you would do with it? Well, make up your mind. Your mind is telling you, make up your mind. You either hate them or you, or you don't. You either hate them or you want to be them. Which one is it going to be? So you're digging yourself further and further into the hole because you divide it against yourself. You talk about them, but then you want their money. But that means you want to be them. You want to be the very people that you're talking about, right? Make it make sense, people. Make it make sense. You can't. You can't make it make sense because it doesn't make sense. So cease and desist with your negative conversation about wealth and about riches and about prosperity. Cease and desist. References. We are at the end of this thing, an hour and 32 minutes. Um, our references come from a complete deliver. Uh, it comes from complete deliverance from the spirit of poverty. Uh, I don't know if you can really see that link, but this is where I got the information from. Offline, here's the website, here's the URL address. This is where I, I received the information for the basis of my lecture for today. And Kimberly Jones, remember I gave you a cultural, a cultural influencer? Well, I got that information from this book by Kimberly Jones, Wealthy, Wealthy, Black, Be, Wealthy Blacks Before the Emancipation um proclamation so if you that book if you want that book um wealthy blacks before the emancip before the emancipation proclamation of 1863 she gives you stories and i won't even say stories um she gives you an account of or stories she gives you an account stories of real people real black people that existed that while slavery was going on in america they became millionaires i suggest you get the book to help change your poverty consciousness it is entitled wealthy blacks before the emancipation proclamation of 1863 is written by kimberly jones to help you change your poverty consciousness and to understand that you've been lied to. That while slavery was going on in America, every black person was not a slave and every black person was not in abject poverty and oppressed. This book proves it. Go buy it. Use your money. 
wisely, circulate your money wisely to help change your poverty mindset, poverty consciousness. Also, the scripture that I quoted at the beginning of this class uh, was taken from the new, from the King James version of the Bible. The affirmation that I provided for you at the beginning of this class came from Dr. Paul Leon Masters' book, Spiritual Mind Power Affirmations, Practical, Mystical, and Spiritual Inspiration Applied to Your Life. Your resources, as I told you before, if you are interested in taking any of my classes, you may do so at Udemy under Reverend DeAndra Averhart. You can also um, follow me on YouTube, Mere Moments with Tia Deshay, whenever I have prophetic messages to give down or as in the spiritual community they want to call them downloads whenever i have a message to deliver i post it on my youtube page and it's under mere moment messages also if you want to purchase any of my books i am an author of six books three of them or four of them are books of poetry and two of them are spiritual metaphysical books they are available on amazon if you go to amazon and you type in the search box, Tia Deshay, my books will come up. Also, you see my source codes. My source codes, um, well, obviously, if you're on your phone taking this class, um, you can't get to the source code. Or maybe you can. I've never, I've never done it. I think maybe you can click on it. I'm not quite sure because I'm so used to using my phone for a source code, but those are my source codes that will take you to other resources that I have to my website. If you want to book um, a service with me, if you want to make an appointment with me for a spiritual uh, consultation, personal development session, you can do so. Um, and then also my source code will take you to the other resources that I have. And if you live in the city of Detroit or if in the state of Michigan, pretty soon, real soon, you'll start seeing my source codes around the city and around the state. So look out for that. And that concludes today's class, today's lecture. What I'm thinking is, I'm gonna keep this up on YouTube maybe for a month couple months no i'm not no i'm not, I'm not going to disobey spirit i was thinking to keep it up for a couple of months and then put it on my udemy i'm not going to do that this is my offering to you i'm going to tithe my gift into you i'm going to tithe my gift into you i'm going to commit to that and um i'm going to offer this complete course as an offering on YouTube. There is not a financial attachment to it. However, if you would like to tithe or give or donate or give an offering, you can do so um, at my PayPal at Tia Deshay. My PayPal is Tia Deshay. If this content really proved valuable to you and really like really got you thinking hard and coming to coming to terms with things um i take donations i take offerings i take tithes however you would like to to identify it as um and my paypal is tia deshay all right so look for wait one more slide <laughs> congratulations you should thank yourself that you devoted an hour and 40 minutes almost an hour and 45 minutes 90 minutes um to yourself and that you are so committed to um to wanting to break the spirit of poverty off of your life and off of your bloodline that you said that you were going to devote time to listen to this lecture and to take this class and cut out all distractions 
Like, you really need to congratulate yourself. Because that's a big commitment. That's a huge commitment to yourself. And what you're telling yourself, what you're telling your subconscious is that you're worth it. What you're telling your subconscious is that you're serious. That poverty ends with you. And you really need to congratulate yourself. Because that's a big deal. And I don't take this lightly. That you decided to sit down, take this course, and engage with this course, and commit to breaking that chain, that mindset of poverty off of your life. You really, 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 really should congratulate yourself and think highly of yourself because it takes a lot because what you're essentially, what you are essentially saying and doing is that you're willing to let go of relationships. You're willing to let go of family ties. You're willing to be ostracized in order to break that spirit of poverty. You're willing to think and talk and behave differently. And for that, you need to be congratulated. In our next class, we're gonna talk about who is poverty and the 10, the 10 attributes of poverty. So until next time, stay blessed and be aware.